this is the seat cover that I painted with the plastic dip before. I'm looking at the camera, it doesn't look like it's showing up on there, but maybe it will on the actual screen. But basically, it didn't hold up real well, and there's parts that are kind of tacky, so I don't know if I put it on too thick and it didn't dry underneath or what. I went to Walmart and got some vinyl, and I'm going to try to recover this. I got this piece off and I'm just cleaning it up with some lacquer thinner and I'm just going to spray it down with the black plastic paint trying to shine it up a little bit this is what I'm using to clean it off with and I'm going to repeat the process with the plastic strip from the front so this project's kind of becoming a nightmare really quickly these are also stripped out the same way that these were I'm guessing they're basically rust welded. Uh, this is a good reason why you put any C's on things and that wouldn't happen. This is what you have underneath the wood. It's called a T-nut. As you thread the bolt in, it pulls these into the wood, sticks them in there and holds it. And so what's happened here is the bolt has rusted itself and welded to this making it one piece so that when you turn the bolt it turns the nut in the wood and it acts as kind of a drill and it spins just drilling out wood so one way to remove it unfortunately is to get your power drill on there with a socket and literally get this thing spinning so fast that it acts as a drill and drills itself out problem being then you have the bolt rust welded to the nut and you're gonna break one or both getting it off of there so again that's why it's good to put a little any C's in there when you thread your bolts down keep that from happening I put a little of this on there hoping that maybe it will penetrate in there and loosen that up, but I think they're so far gone. I figure that's what came out of the other. So I mean, these were really rusted badly. So probably what I'm going to ultimately end up doing is just going to Home Depot and getting another board. It's approximately 18 inches front to back, and of course it's 38 inches at the widest. So they couldn't use a more standard size. So I'm going to have to get a board cut it down and do this little custom cuts on there. It's about a half inch thick, so I'm going to have to look when I'm at Home Depot to see, you know, you get a half inch board, sometimes it's about a quarter inch thick, so i got to find one that's actually about a half inch thick. So I've removed all the brackets and plastic retainers and everything, you see I had to basically just pry those out use the T-nut as a drill bit to force it out. So the, the vinyl is just held on with, as you see, hundreds of staples, all of which are rusted out. So I'm just going to pry these out, peel this off of here. Uh, just about lost my sanity here, but I did pull each one of these out. Now there are several ways that you could cut this. Obviously you could use a hand saw. You could run this through a table saw and at least get a straight cut across there and then have to come in and clean these up. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it with a jigsaw. That way I can go along these contours rather than having to do multiple tools. Nice thing about this one has different speeds so that you can set it up what you're cutting and what sort of shape.
So you see now I have a good rough cut of it. And then I'll just put this back on here. And start fine tuning any of the cuts if necessary. It looks like I need to take a little edge off of here. And a little edge off the other side. Other than that, it looks like it's pretty close. Alright, so I've got it cut very closely. You can take a sander and round those edges. Or if you have a router and you know how to use it, you can go around and make those perfectly smooth. I don't think it's going to matter in this case, but what is going to matter is placement of these holes. So I have two where the T-nuts stayed in place, and I want to get those exactly in the right spot. rest of them it's going to be a little tougher to get it exact because the holes are drilled out by the T-nuts coming out. The other thing I did was marked this is the inside where the pad's going to go and that way I won't get halfway through this and have realized that I put the T-nuts in the wrong way or something. The T-nuts are going to basically go in these locations. I'll tap them into the wood. And I may put some crazy glue or something over them to hopefully keep them from spinning in the wood. I'm just making some rough cuts on the vinyl right now. And uh, make sure that I don't cut it too small. You can always cut more off, but you really can't put more back on. So I'm going to use some 3 8 inch staples shown here. I'm going to start by just putting a couple here in the front just to tack this down temporarily while I heat it up and stretch it into place. And then as it gets more and more in place I'll put more staples down to hold it eventually of course you have to have staples basically all the way around step was just basically kind of pulling this tight and working your way from the middle towards the edges and then stapling as you go so you're keeping that taut on there and then as you work your way toward the edge you see it kind of it starts to work its way down and uh, you know depending on how hot like if you're in a colder climate, obviously you're going to need to do this in a really warm area. I'm in Texas, it's always hot. <clears throat> you can certainly use a heat gun. I'm probably going to need to do a heat gun to get some of these edges a little bit better. But for now, at least I'm getting it in the center where it's looking pretty decent. As you can see. Alright, so I've used the heat gun and kind of just been working my way around and um, it seems to me like it's best to start in the middle on each side so like I started in the middle of the front and worked my way out and then you know kept stretching and did the middle on the back and then worked my way down and then started in the middle on the side and working my way out now I opted to just go ahead and fold this over and pull it tight with the heat gun um, there may be some sort of way to kind of 
bunch this to where you don't have a, a tuck like that. But I figured for the front having that, you know, where it would be a slight crease on the side, it's probably not going to be that noticeable once all the handles are put back on. So right now I'm trying to trim back some of this excess. And see where we're at. And ultimately, obviously, I want to have a, a tight line cut across there, but until it's all stretched, you really don't want to cut because, like I said before, you can always cut more later. But once you've cut, you can't put back on. So this is what the top of the seat looks like, it's been stapled down, and then I just need to go in and put that plastic trim on there, and then put the side handles, and hopefully this will last me a while, I'm going to protect it with some 303 protectant, that's what the bottom looks like right now, far from perfect on the bottom, but like I said, this is not going to be the appearance side. So I think just like the vinyl itself, you want to put these trim pieces on, start from the middle and work your way out. Reattaching these is just bolting them back in where you've put the T-nuts underneath. Those were the bolts that were in there, and you see they're rusted and damaged, so I went ahead and got new ones. They're quarter inch 20 thread, or three quarter inch long. I'm going to put some anti-seize on the threads, and hope that that keeps them from getting rusted. and then just repeat for the other side. And then the side handles go on similarly. The taller side goes in the rear, obviously. And again, those were the bolts that were in there. I'm going to replace them with new bolts. They're quarter inch, 20 thread, 
and these are inch and a half long. And just like with the ones in the front, I'm going to anti seize these, hoping that that keeps them from seizing up, rust welding, whatever else you want to call it. Unlike the ones in the front, these actually have washers on them. And I think what you want to do to tighten them is just get them down to where they're touching and then start turning them a little bit at a time until they're snug. You don't want to over torque it until they break the plastic, obviously. And then since it's a new installation, I'll probably need to retorque these a couple of weeks just to see how they're holding up. Since they don't give you a torque spec, you just kind of finger tighten them. Like I said, the risk of over tightening them is you rip the T nut through the wood and then you have to start all over. The risk of under tightening them is just that they'll come loose and this will fall off. Which, of the two possibilities, that's the better one because you can just put this back on if it falls off. So that's done, then I'll just do the same on the other side. So I'm going to 303 this. So that hopefully, this vinyl will last a long time. So well, here it is on the golf cart. Thankfully, I got everything lined up properly and it fit. In case you're wondering, yes, I could have gone white, but my thought was that I'm not going to keep the blue paint color on here and so changing it to green which is kind of where I'm leaning right now I didn't think white would look good with the green whereas not the tan would uh, I'll be honest I really wanted like a light gray but for some reason that color is just not available anywhere I don't know what the problem is with light gray because it seems like a neutral color and kind of goes with everything and it's still light and you know not as bad in the sun as like a dark gray or black color but like I said I couldn't find any so tan is what it is and uh, you know I'll probably drive this a little bit the uh, seat backs and the back seat are not really what I would say quote unquote needing to be replaced right now so I may leave those on there just for now and see how I like this tan vinyl see if it holds up and everything before I start tackling ripping those off of there if the vinyl holds up then it was definitely a win it was like five dollars a yard at Walmart for the material and uh, you know I probably have enough to do the rest of the golf cart for 20 bucks basically um, compared to ordering new seat covers online I think the cheapest I saw was about sixty dollars and that was just for front seat um, the advantage to that obviously is it's a little thicker vinyl and it's pre-cut and formed so it'll literally fit right on there but except for 20 bucks for a whole golf cart if this works out then you know I'll be really happy hope this video was helpful if it was appreciate a thumbs up and uh, as always please subscribe thanks